everybody. Welcome back to AWS On Air. I am A.M. Grabelny, one of your hosts for AWS On Air, joined by... Uh, I'm still here, Steve joined at the hip, We are joined. We, well, you're welded to that chair today, I can I am, tell. I yeah. am. Yeah. All, all right, right but we've got a special yeah. guest with us to talk all about genomic data, right? Well, uh, yeah, and it, uh, by the way, Aaron Freeman Aaron. here. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's we all should good. actually ask him to introduce uh, himself uh, first. Principal product manager for <laughs> Amazon Omics. Um, and I think the big thing is it's it's genomic data, but it's a lot more than that. So much more. Much more. Much more. So, you know, if we think about it, um, one of the things a lot of our customers are challenged with is how do we make sense of all these types of biological data? Um, collectively, this is called omics. Um, we have genomics, which I think a lot of people know. This is our DNA. Mm -hmm. um, but there's Wait, there's data inside me, Aaron? <laughs> just, just, just a little bit. No. And, 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 yeah, and, and, and the fun fact is far more cells in your body, actually, that are not human DNA than are. We Am have I a, a more SQL database or a NoSQL database? Ooh. Mm. You're a, you're a total <laughs> randomization database, I'll say that. We'll go with semi-structured, so I guess NoSQL is probably the right answer Semi-structured is uh, yeah. right. Um, yes. <laughs> anyways, um, you know, fundamentally, we've heard a lot from our customers. We just, we want to, we need help making sense of all these types of biological data, whether it's the DNA in your body, the RNA, which sort of is the output of that, the proteins that then come from that process, all the way up to what makes us, you know, defines our cells and, and all the way down. And so what we've done is we've really tried to listen to our customers and developed a new sort of purpose-built service to hopefully make their lives easier and solve a lot of those fundamental, undifferentiated heavy lifting challenges that, you know, we try to solve here at AWS. You're so dealing with a lot of data at scale when you're dealing with DNA. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, like, for example, you run, let's say we extract our DNA, we run it through a, a sequencer, that alone is 50, 80 gigabytes of data, depending on the sequencer and modality. And then when you think about the fact that our customers now are sequencing hundreds of thousands and upwards with aspirations of millions of these individuals, it's a massive data storage problem. Mm -hmm. It's a big data processing problem. It's a big data analysis problem. And so what we've done is we've taken a lot of those fundamental data challenges that we hear from customers across industries and really focus in on making it applicable for healthcare and life sciences organizations that are really trying to make sense of all this data in advanced precision medicine and scientific discovery. So how does Amazon Amics help them? What are the, what are the features and, and capabilities? Yeah, so I think there are sort of three main, uh, three main features in our service. And so okay. um, there's a lot more, but if you break it down, um, I think there's sort of three investment pillars we're trying to help our customers with. So the first one is, how do we make, you know, how, how do we help our customers with uh, the barriers to entry to scale? Mm -hmm. And I think there's a few things there. Uh, one is obviously data management. So uh, how do we make data um, in the industry, we call it fair data, so findable, accessible, interoperable, and, and, and uh, reusable data. Oh, nice. um, so how do we make it easy, effectively, to search across all, these, all this data that we're uh, collecting? Um, and then second, how do we do it in a cost-authorized way? And so uh, the first thing in our service, and I'll just sort of show this on, on the screen yeah, here if you can mm -hmm. see it. Take a look. Um, it's sort of, you know, omics or, uh, in this case, genomics optimized data storage. Okay. And so what we've done is, is a good way to think about it is today customers would use Amazon S3. Um, Amazon S3 is an absolutely incredible service. Um, that can scale for really any customer challenge. We even heard today, right, Pinterest, yeah. X-Byte data. That's mm -hmm. just, in, just uh, unimaginable in, in a lot of ways. Uh, but what we've done <laughs> yes. is, is... Most is we, of this is unimaginable, we, frankly. <laughs> yeah, is um, we've applied a lot of tricks under the hood and optimizations right. and can offer our customers even lower cost per gigabase, uh, which is sort of the unit of measurement in, in the field. And the reason that we can do that is we use a lot of contextual information about the industry rather than, you know, just saying, oh, this is a, a data format. I'm going to apply, you know, BZIP2 or GZIP. There's a lot of additional right. information that we can, we can optimize there. Mm -hmm. um, the sort of the second piece, and I'll jump to the, to the right of the screen, is, is really if we have a lot of raw data, how do we actually make sense of, of this data once it's uh, analyzed? And so the output of a lot of these canonical processes, let's take a... An, uh, an initiative that is doing population sequencing, so trying to sequence a lot of individuals across a country, for example, in order to, um, you know, understand what what biomarkers in a, in a genome cause disease, for example. Right. Right. Um, yes. You I, need, I've you need, you need experienced that with some, you know, like at home DNA testing oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah, like totally, that. Right. I, you know, they tell me, oh, you'll 
you're more likely to flush when you drink alcohol type <laughs> things. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, so so for uh, sure. you know, looking for the uh, um, uh, was it dehydrogenase? If if I'm remembering my biology correctly, uh, <laughs> I won't but correct you because I don't it, it's know. A, it, it's all good. <laughs> um, but if you think about that at scale, um, there's a lot of uh, data. It's a process called variant calling. And so when you've identified all these variants and basically it's saying, okay, you and I, for example, share 99.9-ish .9 percent of our DNA. Yes. Um, but there's a bit that's different. And that bit that's different is really what defines who we are, defines our propensity to disease. It defines, um, you know, what drugs we metabolize well versus ones that we don't, statins, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, and so we need a way to analyze that. And so we built a lot of these analytic transformations to help our customers take this population scale data. And with a single API call, rather than having to manage your own ETL pipelines with EMR or glue oh, wow. or any of those things, you just say start burying import job and the data lands it into Athena. It's uh, gonna be really hard to believe. I'm so, not a scientist here. It's all good. I'm not. Uh, but what it sounds like to my non-scientist ears is that you know, just storing the omics data, that's part of the problem. But you're not looking at this data in a silo. No. Right? And they're very all. common ways applied by various it, scientists. And you all have figured out some of those and have shortcut it, it for it, Exactly. And a lot of, you know, data science is still a lot of data wrangling, right? Yes. And, and oh, so yeah. if you look at our investments, uh, especially in this past month, like not just with Amazon Omics that right. we launched uh, here for some of the analytic transformations, but similar types of things with Amazon Health Lake Analytics, which just was announced a couple weeks ago at the yeah. health conference. I see it in, so, in my world, so, the security lake, right? Yep, like exactly, yeah, yeah. Dealing with security data, there's there's patterns, right? Like well, the, and, and, and you heard Adam today, right, talking yeah. about the, the open standards that yes. we're, we're trying to organize. And so it's very similar, okay. right? And so we're taking these canonical formats, but they're not always ready for analytics, and we're making them ready for analytics and machine learning so customers can do that much easier. Very cool. Very cool. And then once we have sort of the raw data storage and the transformed data storage, it's really about how we compute on that data. And so bioinformatics, you can think of as sort of the, the overarching industry of um, uh, computing on omics data or bi biology. Um, and, and what our customers like to do is, and, and a lot of this is to enable interoperability, is they take these domain-specific languages and they use those to define their analyses. Now today, oh. customers, uh, or before today, I guess, if customers were building this on, on AWS, they would have to you know, pick their workflow engine, which is effectively, think of it as an interpreter or a compiler, mm -hmm. um, get it to run, and that has to manage all the retries, all the running, all that stuff. Um, all, all that, they have to provision their file systems, everything, and again, all undifferentiated. And so what we've done is instead we're trying to we're trying to get our customers to the point of like what defines their science, what defines medicine. And that's three things, right? It's the tools you need to analyze your data. Right. It's the, the data you're actually trying to analyze. Mm -hmm. And then it's your workflow. It's the dependencies between those things. And so what we're doing here um, is with our sort of bioinformatics workflows capability is making this fully managed. So a customer brings their workflow script and their tools and their data and we'll just run it. And so you define it once, and you just run it over and over and over again. And so what that gives customers, it gives them reproducibility. It gives them the visibility to actually understand how much these things cost, which wow. can be a real, a real mm -hmm. challenge in the industry. Um, and so really just trying to make this simpler and simpler for customers as, um, you know, as they're trying to do really just incredible things as we look across the industry. Yeah, we're running very yeah. short on time, It's Aaron. all good. What, what? What do you want to leave with our audience? Well, I think the, the big thing to leave with is check out the page, or ch check out the <laughs> service, nice. right? Uh, yes. It's not just the page. Um, <laughs> well, I see you got tutorials on here. Yeah, so right? we so. have tutorials. Uh, if you're at reInvent by any chance, we have uh, a couple uh, sessions tomorrow, LFS 304 and AIM 219, uh, tomorrow night in the wind. Definitely okay. go check those out. But if you're not at reInvent, go to aws.amazon.com slash omics. Mm -hmm. Very easy, hopefully, to remember. Uh, and you can get started from there. So we have tutorials. Uh, all this is, is ready and, and waiting. And please don't hesitate uh, for, for feedback. I'm findable on LinkedIn, uh, anywhere else. Would absolutely love to, to chat with you, understand your challenges, and see how you know we can work together and innovate on your behalf and just really make all the, just the phenomenal work our customers are doing just easier and easier. Sounds like you've removed 
uh, tremendous amounts of impediments yeah. to getting to value for scientists that are yeah. trying to research omics data. That's the hope, right? Love it. Um, I love do it. the yeah, science, not the heavy um, lift. Yes. All right. Go. It, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Aaron, so much for joining for us. Joining we us. will be right yeah. back with more from AWS On Air. Thank you.